My next guest is the first Indigenous woman in Canada to earn a PhD in astrophysics. And with her new docu-series, North Star, she's hoping to inspire a new generation of young scientists. Please welcome Lori Ross O'Nepton. <laughs> Lori, welcome to the show. Thank you so, so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, honestly, congratulations on this new series. Your job is totally fascinating. When did you know that you wanted to study the stars and the formation of stars? Well, yeah, it took me a while to get it. Yeah. When I was young, I had no idea you could be an astronomer. Mm -hmm. It's not something you have in mind. Mm -hmm. But I always loved looking at the stars, looking at the environment around me, and I was curious. Yeah. Um, so when I had to pick a, a science, because I was a scientist, that's yeah. for sure, <laughs> I decided to study physics and astronomy, and that's when it started at the university. That's amazing. So you weren't... That's the thing, going to school and finding these new things that you never really thought were yep. jobs. Yep. And all of a sudden you're opened up to this literal whole universe. Yeah, totally. <laughs> of, of information and things in science. That is so amazing and so cool. Now, in your series, you talk about how you love sci-fi. Yeah. I find this interesting because when you're watching a sci-fi movie, can you actually like turn your brain off and be like, yes, I believe this? I can't, yeah, I'm good at that. Yeah? Yeah, yeah I like, uh, there's like art into it. Yeah. Uh, and I accept that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I like it anyway. I know it's not perfect, but I love it. Because it's, it's trying to explain it, right? Yeah. And trying to make it interesting. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be perfect. No. <laughs> That's the thing. It opens it up, I think, even to mm -hmm. the broader kind of community oh, yeah. and people who are maybe science-based. Yeah. But they can kind of explore and learn more. Totally. And science can look a little bit magic. And I think we, we need to keep that. Oh, 100%. <laughs> I agree. Well, you were just telling me you recently relocated to Toronto. Uh, yes, I am. <laughs> but prior to that, you lived in Hawaii because you were working on the Canada-France-Hawaii telescope. Yes. And doing yep. research, and that's what this series is documenting as well. Yep. So tell us more about that project. Yeah, so I, I arrived in Hawaii following an instrument. Uh, it's something we put on the telescope to look at the sky. Mm -hmm. And I, we built it in Canada. It's a Canada... A product. That's <laughs> and, amazing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Canadian product. And we, um, we put it on the telescope there and help people from everywhere on the planet to use it. And myself, I'm an astronomer, so mm -hmm. I do science also with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I build a project that is called Signals. It's studying star forming regions, so areas and galaxies that are actively forming new stars. And we're wow. looking at that in the nearby universe and trying to understand this process. I can't even, like, I think my brain just, <laughs> I can't even start to fathom where you even start with a project like that. Yeah, yeah, well, for me, it's starting by building something yeah. that helps you to do it. Yeah. And then, uh, and then actively looking at the sky and trying to understand what you observe. Yeah. That's amazing. And, and you are such a strong advocate for more women and more diversity in your field. Yes. Why is that so important to you? Yeah, it's something also we're trying to show in the series mm -hmm. because even myself, I was trained by a female astronomer. Mm -hmm. uh, my supervisor, Carmen Robert, she's the only female in the Department of Astronomy at the university I was at. Wow. And uh, I also teach a lot of uh, young women mm -hmm. who do astronomy. And I know I can connect with them. And I know it's a special thing to be able to relate like that. Um, and I want to keep doing that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's something uh, important in transferring this information to the next generation. Totally. Helping them. Yeah. Well, you've talked about also how much pressure you feel when you got your PhD, being the first Indigenous woman in Canada to get this yeah. amazing, amazing qualification. How is that, how is that, like, working through that pressure, but also knowing you're an inspiration and kind of putting yourself on the line like that? Yeah, you know, I, I remember all the emotion I felt when I first realized that I was the first. Yeah. Because I had my PhD and then a journalist asked me, is there other women in your field? Mm -hmm. And it's a pretty small field, so we know each other. Yeah. And I'm thinking about it, I was like, no, oh no, there's not, no yeah. other one. Oh, okay, oh, I'm it's the just first me. One. Yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, I got confused and then like, oh, it was scared, sad, a little bit of everything at the same time. Yeah. And then I thought, it shouldn't be like that. There should have been more women mm -hmm. before me, and we have to change this. So I feel like I have this responsibility to make things uh, better for the next generation, yeah. Definitely, and I, I think that's such a that's such a big thing to take on your shoulders, but it's such a beautiful thing. Yeah, and sharing. It's motivating. One hundred percent. That's yes. amazing. Well, you, you've also talked about how Inu culture has influenced you becoming an astrophysicist. Oh yeah. How how is that? It's something I realized later on because um, I 
I got my PhD and then I suddenly had more time to do what I wanted, the science that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I realized, um, I want to know about the astronomy from my community. Mm -hmm. What was this perspective in astronomy? What did we knew back then? How did we see the sky? Mm -hmm. And by doing this kind of research and finding out the knowledge base from my community, I realized that we come from the stars and there's this cycle, you know? And modern technology is telling us that we come from the stars mm -hmm. and without them, we wouldn't be here today. So I realized that maybe it's my subconscious, I don't know, <laughs> but I ended up studying something that is very dear to my community. And I felt like there was a poesy in, into this, you know? A hundred percent. Well, honestly, the next time I go star stargazing, which is every morning, I look at Venus, it's out my window, <laughs> I will think of you, and that is so amazing. Thank you so much, and congratulations on all your success. Thank you for being here today. Hey, Mary here. What did you think? Drop your comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the good stuff.